everyone, my name is Kimberly and welcome to another day on Ray of Joe K, where each new day is an opportunity to slay. Hope you all are staying healthy, well, and blessed. I tend to discuss different topics related to perceptions and behaviors around personal growth and overall wellness. So if this content is right up your alley, hit that subscribe button and become part of the Joe K community where we can learn and grow on this journey together. A couple weeks ago, or I guess now a few weeks ago, it was my birthday and it was it was a lot of fun. I decided to do things a little differently this year since I tend not to really celebrate my birthday all that much. Um, you know, not really throw any big parties. Usually it's limited to small to get, get together and very simple, but this year I guess I decided to go um, I'm not gonna say I went all out because when people think that they're thinking you went to Vegas and you had no no I actually um, decided to go to the spa which was nice a nice pamper session got together with friends you know enjoyed dinner and then went to a spooky history tour we went to a trampoline park which was interesting we went to a wine tasting I was just glad to spend time with the people in my life and I'm glad that everyone had a good time. I think that's what made it more enjoyable. And I did get some gifts, you know. Thank you if you guys are watching. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the gifts. That was that was my birthday. So as part of my birthday, I posed the question to the community. What activities come to mind when they think about self-care? It began as just general curiosity on some ideas of how I could pamper myself on my birthday. But of course, I then really started started to wonder because apparently I like to think more than I need to what types of activities really do come to people's minds when they think about the idea or the notion of self-care so some of the answers that I got back were things like facials pedicures manicures massage all activities I love <laughs> and all the activities I pretty much did as well. And you know, those were not really that far off from what I had been expecting to get as far as answers. I was kind of expecting or hoping to kind of see self-care activities mentioned that maybe uh, didn't come that readily to mind. I wanted to be surprised. if. There was an activity I hadn't really considered as being self-care. I, I wanted to be surprised, but overall they were pretty much what I was expecting. Again, I enjoyed all of these activities with budget in mind, of course. It got me thinking, why is it that we're more readily or likely to associate certain activities like facials or spa treatments and so on with self-care? And it got me wondering about the areas of life that self-care actually encompasses. So I posed another question, uh, this time to a few people. How would you define self-care in your life? What does it mean to you? And mind you, these individuals that I asked this question to, they came from different backgrounds uh, demographically, but overall their responses were fairly similar. Um, things like taking care of your needs, uh, taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, socially, in ways that bring you peace and relief. I wanted to then find out more of a universal definition of self-care if there was one. Uh, and I found a few slightly different definitions. Uh, most of them were geared towards physical health or the medical realm of healthcare. However, I was able to pick up some varied definitions and kind of put them all together to encompass what self-care looks like. So here's that definition. Taking care of oneself by engaging in activities that work to promote and improve one's overall personal health, human development, and well-being in a way that meets one's present and future needs. With that in mind, activities such as taking care of your finances, making time for a loved one, or taking up a hobby like swimming can all qualify as self-care. Yet these are activities that aren't necessarily presented in the same light, at least within the umbrella of self-care as 
counterparts like spa treatments, pedicures, facials, and so on. And I started to, you know, think, why is that? And to go into the sociological standpoint um, of maybe why that is, I looked at society as maybe a whole. Because self-care isn't all that new. It really started picking up or gaining ground mm, last several years where it became more trendy. I think maybe this is why within self-care, why we see certain activities promoted as self-care and maybe other activities which are technically self-care, we don't see that promoted as much. And it falls down to two things, visibility and commodity. With each and every trend, appearance and money are always at the forefront. What is visible to the naked eye can be appealed to the, the senses. And what can be appealed to the senses can elicit a raw emotion and associate that emotion with whatever can be seen. And anything with that much power can be transformed into a money-making banquet. Does a spa day make you feel good? Like just, just picture it, just picture it. With maybe a bit of aromatherapy dashed in. I know it makes me feel good. Or maybe a weekend mini getaway. Or maybe a day out and the calm bounty of nature. Hearing these things, are they making you feel pretty good right now? Yeah. Like I said, all of these things appeal to my emotions and are very well activities that I would love to do on a daily basis would be nice. <laughs> it kind of goes to my point of eliciting that raw emotion and associating that emotion with these types of activities. Now, does that fact make these activities socially or morally wrong because it falls within what can be attributed to price? No, it doesn't. You know, it's just how the world works today. And to not really talk about this and how this doesn't play a role into how we perceive self-care wouldn't paint the whole picture, would it? We talked a little bit about what activities within self-care get more notoriety than others, but as we're talking more about how self-care has become a trend, where is that stemming from? Let's kind of talk about the components of what kind of brought self-care to the forefront of our conversations today. Now, as both time and energy are becoming central pieces of daily life, especially with a greater push towards the work-life balance, they're becoming more visible and tangible. Things that we really want to see in our lives. We want more time to do the things that we want to we want to do, we want more energy to do them as well. It's really those two centerpieces that I, be I personally believe have brought it to the forefront because when people are looking more for that balance in their life, they're looking for different ways of kind of just coping, especially since it feels like we're always constantly on the go. We easily run into burnout. Um, or stress or anxiety, we kind of look for ways to cope through all of those things. Kind of going back to the activities for self-care, what are other practices of self-care? Um, just for any of you out there who are curious, there are some of the more underrated self-care activities. I'll list out a few here. One is budgeting. And a lot of people don't like to hear that word. Sometimes I don't like to hear that word, but I'm not gonna lie, budgeting has helped my fan finances tremendously. As unglamorous or tedious as it may seem, it is necessary for the spoke of financial health. If you don't know exactly where your money is going or how you can increase that income, in a world where you clearly need money to obtain resources to live, stress and anxiety are bound to follow. Another one, and I'm going to explain this one because it's not so much that it's not highlighted, but it's highlighted within a certain context. Exercise is also a self-care activity. Like I said, it is hailed in the spotlight, but it's done so within the context of 
like physical health rather than in, within the context of self-care. Also, I want to expand on the way that we think about exercise. It can range from a lot of different activities like walking the dog or going for a 15 minute walk after dinner um, or <laughs> spending an hour and a half at a trampoline park. Healthy eating and hydration. This one also kind of speaking to the point that I highlighted earlier. They're highlighted in the context of physical health, but not so much within the context of self-care, but they are self-care activities. I do also want to use this point to emphasize that educating ourselves on the benefits of doing these activities is also another portion of self-care. And it's really about understanding how we can combine the best of education, the best of nutrition, the best of hydration into daily life. Another category, uh, this one might not be as maybe underrated because I mentioned spa treatments, pedicures, manicures, that would technically fall under this um, particular activity. But I want to, instead of overall hygiene, I think I want to just focus on simple hygiene because I think we underestimate the restorative powers of a nice shower or bath or just a nice hair wash or shampoo session, um, brushing our teeth or heck even just wearing some nice clean clothes. I know we've been all affected by this current situation and we live in a new world right now, but um, and you guys might be, you know, rolling out of bed, like going to school or going to work in your pajamas technically because you're online, but wearing some nice clean clothes when you do go, it does put you in a different frame of mindset. I will say that. And I've been both. I've been pajamas, I've been in nice clothes, so I know. Um, it's really because um, many of these activities are done as a regular routine to the point where they feel monotonous, where it might not feel like self-care, but it is. And, you know, we don't really realize that until we are in a situation where those things aren't as easily accessible or are placed as non-priorities in the disarray of life. And I also want to put cleaning and organizing your space here in this particular activity as well, because it is true what they say, a cluttered space does create a cluttered mind and vice versa. It all comes together with how we're able to function on a daily basis. Spirituality. Again, something that is, it, it can be argued on what context, like some people define spirituality as its own category others might attribute more of a religious interpretation to it and neither of those are wrong so i guess maybe it depends on where you highlight it where like maybe in more of the religious context that is a little bit more highlighted but again it's highlighted in a different umbrella within society not so much within self-care but Anywho, well, whatever you draw your spirituality from, that becomes your foundation for your attitudes and behaviors towards life. So yes, spirituality, taking care of that is self-care. And I have spoken a bit about that as well in the What's Your Anchor video. So if you wanna check that out, check out the videos I posted and you'll find it. After all, you know, balance does begin within. So some activities could include prayer, it can include meditation, or it could be as simple as just placing yourself in nature and just creating more self-awareness and mindfulness. Another one is hobbies. As a category, I wouldn't, I, I, I personally don't feel like hobbies are maybe highlighted enough or it's more done as a way of creating, I guess, your own business or own money-making thing, really. Not just to really enjoy, but it's okay to have activities you just enjoy doing. Enjoyment doesn't have to function on logic or lead to some sort of tangible reward that's worthy of doing. Feel free to explore different hobbies and get creative with different ways you can incorporate them into your own life. And for me, one of my hobbies is writing. 
and I've learned to incorporate it in a lot of different spheres, a lot of different mediums, but it's just a way for my creative tendencies, my imagination to stretch itself. And, you know, there are things that I'm doing more for the business side of things and things that I'm just doing for fun. Like I'm, I, I'm writing fan fictions just for the fun of it. Um, it's not going to lead to anything. It's just for the fun of it. And then I'm actually working on works that I want to publish. If that's what you want to do with your hobbies, have at it. But it's also just great to have something you love to do. And that's that. Journaling or reading. So this one is, it's interesting because I feel like there was a period where it was highlighted or sometimes it's kind of like an up and down highlighting. It fluctuates. <laughs> At least personally, that's what I've um, seen. But journaling and reading, I feel we do take those for granted. And in that space, it's just you and the book or you and your notebook. It's really a space where you can block out the rest of the world and truly find some space for intros introspection. Sleep. So this has been a never ending battle for me because I am, I am a night owl and um, rest and recovery are necessarily, ne necessarily, hmm. rest and recovery are also necessary for daily function and overall wellness. We know that we need it, but of course I know that the demands of life sometimes keep us from prioritizing it. And I know this because like I said, I've been guilty myself, so I understand, but it is, it, it is and should be a priority. And honestly, there are so much other activities that I could um, go on about, but I can't really fit it all in. However, if you are looking for more strategies you can incorporate into your life to create that sense of balance, do feel free to check out um, an amazing self-care blog, Noonzia Dreams, that has different posts on stress and anxiety coping strategies, environmental self-care tips, positive daily habits, and honestly, there's there's so much on that website. There's different lists that you can go through, recommendations, and you know, just a lot of helpful resources if that is something that you're truly interested in and serious about improving or incorporating into your life. There's kind of a mix with general knowledge as well as, you know, certain aspects to focus on like mental health. And, you know, I think she presents it beautifully. So I'll go ahead and link her website down in the description below so you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. Now, before we kind of conclude this video, I want to also talk about maybe some of the misunderstandings of what self-care is. So let's go into what self-care is not. It is not meant to be overindulging. Sometimes we get easily into the mode that this makes me feel good, so let me continue doing it. Again, balance. <laughs> This desire also does get reinforced with the idea of self-care being a very socially ce celebrated trend at the moment. So we kind of get that pat on the back. Yeah, it's self-care, so you do you. However, the goal is creating some form of stability in life by giving attention to the areas that contribute to your well-being. This is not the result of careless action or overindulgence, but it is a constant mindfulness of making meaningful adjustments in life that create those healthy deposits. Another thing that self-care is not is a one and done or occasional occurrence. Self-care ideally should be a part of our daily routine. If it is a constant push towards personal growth and improvement, it's like you're constantly nurturing a plant. Same thing applies here. I believe that bettering yourself doesn't have to be or feel like a chore. And it begins to feel that way when we're trying to force outer growth or improvement, something that the world can visibly see with the naked eye, which may come premature and it usually backfires. The important foundations of bettering ourselves happen internally so we can allow it time to blossom. We don't need to impress the world with our growth, and we have nothing to prove to anyone else. 
but I know that sometimes in a world where instant gratification reigns supreme, it can be tempting and it sometimes feels like we have to. Another thing that self-care is not is being, I'll say socially selfish. And I, I'm gonna explain why I say that opposed to just selfish. I'm going to make a bold claim here by saying this, but selflessness, I believe is a lie. So altruism or that idea of altruistic tendencies, that idea of complete selflessness, I believe that it's a lie. I feel that all actions come from some form of selfish desire, whether that is a want or a need. What becomes problematic is if selfishness begins to run amok or override or degrade other people's wants or needs. That's what I'd like to term toxic behavior. Self-care is a preservation of self. And if our needs are not being met, how can we effectively attend to the daily functions of our lives? Um, and daily functions, might I add, that might affect other people in different ways. The world will not crash if you give yourself pause to take care of your own needs. Another thing that self-care is not, and um, this is really the last point I want to end on, it's not a time-consuming activity, or at least it shouldn't be. Again, if done with that self-awareness in mind, it can seem seamlessly be integrated into life. However, this isn't to say that this doesn't come with its own type of planning or due diligence. I'm not saying that. If you're attending a meeting with your well-being to implement an action plan or some reflection into that action plan, that time better be blocked off on the calendar, just like any other appointment. So it does still need its effort to be put in in order to be effective in your life, but it shouldn't be like a whole day planned around it. Again, you're looking to achieve that balance to get to where you want to be. So that's that on you know self-care. It was really interesting and fun kind of talking about this topic and thinking about it. I think I didn't really think that deeply into self-care until I really started delving more into this topic. I'm always for a journey of self-discovery here. Uh, but if you gained a value from this video, do hit the like button. Um, of course, if there's a topic you'd like me to speak more on or offer more insight, definitely hit me up in the comments. You know, I encourage you to comment on maybe things that you liked, things that you didn't like. If there was something that you felt, you know, I could have spoken more on, just let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to find me on social media if you're interested in following my journey up close or if you're interested in any additional content on personal growth. And you can find my blog, my social media details on the description below. To all you wonderful warriors out there fighting the good fight, be kind, uplift one another, and stay golden.